Well, it's um, fascinating to me that you are going to all the trouble of creating these metals from scratch of bronze and gold and silver and so forth, but it does strike me that there's a problem here, because what if you want to trade some of these um, precious metals for something else, uh, perhaps doing business with someone who doesn't know and doesn't entirely trust you? Now, of course, you, Brian, are, I'm sure, entirely trustworthy, but possibly out of a paranoid fear or you know, just uh, worthy prudence, uh, a, a merchant might want to test the quality of your metal before sealing the deal with you. So how could he do this? Well, um, today we might use something like X-ray fluorescence, but that's not really available in the ancient world. Uh, but they did have aqua fortis. You can probably work out what that means. Aqua as in water, uh, aquatic, and fort, uh, a, a stronghold, uh, piano forte, soft, strong. Uh, yeah, it means strong. So aqua forte, aqua fortis uh, is uh, just strong water, which is a bit disappointing anyway, but it's what we today would call acid. Now, um, gold is really not very ert. Um, you can uh, get a lump of pure 24 karat gold and pour some quite strong acid on it, and frankly it'll just sit there and look at you as though to say, huh, is that all you've got? But what if you put some impure gold in front of a trader and he poured some aqua fortis on it? Right, well, say 14 karat gold will have some impurities that might react with the, uh, the acid and you see a little bit of fizzing, a little bit of bubbling going on there. So if you know how reactive all the various metals should be, um, then you can pour the acid on uh, the various metals you want to test and see how reactive they are. And this is known as the acid test, so it's gone into the language. But there's a problem. For one thing, it's a bit slow and inconvenient. Uh, another thing, it's a little bit destructive. But also, in the ancient and medieval worlds, um, strong acids weren't actually available in most supermarkets. So something uh, portable, non-destructive, and that would do all these different metals would be uh, really useful. But it's something of a big ask, isn't it? But there was such a thing. Yes, the touchstone. Touchstone. This has also gone into the language. Uh, a touchstone we today uh, use to mean um, something that you can fall back on that's reliable and familiar and, and gives you a, a basis to work from. Now a touchstone is simply a piece of stone, but not any old stone. It has to be something that, uh, even when you get it quite smooth, retains a certain abrasive and porous quality to it. Uh, chert and slate were often used. So you've got a, a flat piece of stone and you can rub some metal on it and it, it's rough enough to take a very, very fine powder off the uh, piece of metal and then hold it in its porous surface so that you can look at the way it glints off the dark surface. The way you would use a touchstone is you would get something of known purity. So you, you've got a bit of coin, say, that you you trust this is a pure silver and you rub that on your touchstone then you get something which someone is trying to trade with you and telling you is pure silver and you rub that next to it and compare the two and if they look the same you know they probably are the same. Now you might think this is not going to be very accurate but actually a good touchstone uh, used by someone who knows what he's doing uh, can get accuracy of about 15 parts per thousand that's 1.5%. So you could say, Bob, in that case, someone could be, could, be, could be fooling you, could be using something that's less than 1.5% impure. That's an awful lot of trouble to go to. If you've got a fake coinage, you're going to have to make fake dyes. That's a lot of trouble to go to. And of course, there's the trouble of the risk of being caught and so forth. If you're going to go to all that trouble for just a tiny, tiny saving in the purity of the metal, uh, then you're probably a fool. Uh, so the touchstone did actually work. But I can see from the lens that you're a little bit dubious, aren't you? Well, let's see one in action. That is pewter. All right. That one there is silver. And even if when they're polished, they're hard to tell apart, with one of these stones, you can do it very easily. So it can tell silver from the fake thing. Could it also do other metals? It could do other metals. Um, and I've actually used it to identify some metals today. Mm -hmm. This is one of my rings. I know that this is sterling silver. Right. That and that are close enough that they are both silver, yep. but they're continental silver. They have different other... The other metals in them are slightly different, and the right. colour is very slightly different. So, uh, foreign muck silver. Foreign muck silver. Okay. And if I turn this over, mm -hmm. that I know is copper. It's yep. not easy to see there, but if I turn it a bit, uh -huh. I might catch the light. That I know is bronze. That is a modern pound coin which is clearly copper, uh -huh. and you can see yes. the same colour. And I have put, in fact, just for the sake of completeness, uh -huh. this is iron, which looks different again. It looks closer to the pewter right. 
but there is a difference in colour. And the more you would use this to compare metals, the more you would be able to tell them apart. Presumably there are a couple of ifs here. One, you've got to have uh, very good lighting conditions, and another is that Presumably not all touchstones were identical, so you had to get to know what a metal looked like on your touchstone. Yes. This is why if I want to know what silver is, even if the mark has worn a bit thin mm. on my touchstone, I will take usually this ring off my finger, Yes. and I will make a new mark so that in that light I know exactly what my silver looks like. Right. And then I will compare the metal. And how many times can you do that before you've worn your ring away almost completely? It takes quite a long time. It takes quite a long time. I haven't okay. put much of a dent in this one yet. I've been using it for years. Well, there you go then. Seems that touchstones do work. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and check out other content we have covering a wide variety of topics. Also, if you've enjoyed these series, consider supporting us on Patreon. We are largely a fan-funded channel and depend on the support of our viewers in order to keep our series going. Thanks for watching.